Eric Vidim Shalin of Epic Mind Studio. I'm creative director here and also PhotoG instructor. So today is finally going to be the long-awaited follow-up blog or video blog about uh, focus stacking. In the part one of this video I had shown you three, three, four months ago is the whole science of the fraction. Why is it when you stop down your lens you basically lose sharpness. There's a softness. Now if you haven't seen this video I invite you to go check it out. Today we're going to see how to counteract that whole softness issue. In part one, I'm going to show you how you can change the camera to subject distance to counteract, as well as using focus stacking. Now, we're going to compare Adobe's method, as well as third-party software, Helicon Focus, and how they both can handle a sim this, this whole situation of focus stacking, which one's better. Um, in part two, we're going to take it a little notch higher, and I'm going to describe the three different methods used in Helicon Focus as well as two common parameters that are available to you to touch up or get a, a little bit of a better rendition. So without further ado, let's jump behind the camera and take a look at it. All right, so the depth of field problem. You're trying to shoot something, an object. Say this old little retro Voigtlander camera. You want to get all of it in focus. What are your options? We saw that stopping down to f32 or whatever your max aperture on your camera is, or I should say the smallest it can stop down to, it's not enough. It's not going to work. You're going to have diffraction. You're going to have blur. So what are your solutions? So let's try shooting this camera. I'm going to put it up on the, on the shooting table here. Simple, one light just to get an idea of what can we do. All right, so let me just set up my camera. Okay, and just snap a quick shot. All right. All right, one photo. Let's take a look. Hello, photo. All right, so I'm shooting at f14. I'm shooting at f14 on a phase one camera. You could be shooting on your Nikon, on your Canon, your Sony, doesn't make a difference. What I'm going to show you here applies across the board. So I put the camera at an angle just to have a little bit of a harder item to get into full focus. So if we look at the object in Capture One, um, what's closest to the camera? It's quite, a, quite sharp. I would say it's very sharp. Now what happens as we move to the back? Well, look at these le letters over here, the uh, F8 on the aperture ring. It's getting blurry. Further back you go, the more blurry you get. Ah, look at the dial on the camera. You can't even really read the, the brand name anymore. So look at the size of the camera versus the frame. It's not even full frame yet. I can technically make a bigger shot, but the closer I'll bring my camera, the bigger the object gets in my frame, the more out of focus it gets. So. I'm not going to stop down my lens. It's going to give me diffraction. What's another option? Well, you can actually move the camera away from your subject. It will get smaller, but you can cover more with the depth of field. So let me just move the camera back, and let's see what happens. I'm going to try to keep the uh, more or less the same field of view. I'll try. <laughs> All right. And let's see. Let's put this into focus. About the same, about the same. Okay, take a shot, and let's take a look in Capture One. Now it looks like a little toy if you look in the screen. And no, it is not a toy camera, it is a real camera. If we put them side by side, the pictures, well, it certainly looks teeny. Now let's crop it to be about the same as the picture I just took previously. I have more space on the right. About like that. So, okay. So, side by side, they look very similar. The one on the right is the image that was done with moving camera backwards, and the one on the left was the one with the camera a, a bit closer to the subject. Let's compare depth of field. Let's look at the image on the right. So, okay, double click on it and capture one that goes to 100% zoom. So we look at the front. I can read pretty well. 
the F8 on the aperture ring. I read very well. How about the logo? Ah, I can see, I think it's Oitlander. There you go. And now the rear of the object, there's still actually some focus softness on the back. So actually, it's not even fully in focus yet. But generally speaking, we got pretty much everything in focus. We can move the camera back a bit more, but then we're going to lose a lot more pixels. The camera is becoming really small. We're going to have to crop the, fo the, the photo. Now let's see what happens when I go to 100% on both shots. The one on the right, I've cropped. The one on the left is full frame. So, all right, now I just zoomed in together. The one on the left, I'm going to now double click on. Oops and bring it to 100% and bring it to about the same area. Now look at the difference in pixel data. The image on the left is ginormous. It's, it's freaking huge. It's 60 megapixels is back. It's freaking big. The one on the right, I've cropped probably 50%. You have a lot less pixel data. Now, is this catastrophic? Is this going to mean, oh, crap, I, I can't use this. I, my clients are going to not use me. I'm not going to make money. No, if this is going to go on the web, it's enough. You don't need more. You can maybe even, this is still probably a 2,000 pixel image. It's pretty darn big. But if you need to do editing, you need those pixel data, then it's not enough. Like I know some editors like to crop, some graphic designers crop images. Once you give this to an editor or your client, if it's not for web use or it's for making little sub macro shots, you can't use it as well. It's a smaller image. So this comes down to saying, What's the other option? That option is focus stacking. Focus stacking is taking a bunch of consecutive images of like slices as you progress to your focusing range. You start at the tip, front tip of the object and you move to the back to get the rear out of, um, the most out of focus point. So you're racking between there, you're taking consecutive shots. You then bring it into a software which will stack the images together and produce one file in one layer that looks entirely sharp. So this is where I'm going to show you how I do it. And I'm going to compare quickly Adobe Photoshop versus uh, my favorite, which is Helicon Focus. So let me, again, put the camera to a level that I really, I'm going to get a big shot. So the big shot, let's come in and grab the, this guy closer. You'll see once I take my shot. All right, Let's see if I can go too close. I can even go closer. All right. Let's focus down, lock the camera, lock the, the studio stand. All right. I can actually get closer than this, but for the purposes, well, let's, let's really exaggerate it and really show the purpose of this. So. So take a first shot. OK, I'm going to zoom out. All right, so look at the size of the image. It's pretty darn big. It's almost full frame. It's ginormous. Um, we got the depth of field problem. We can see that the back is out of focus. So how do we remedy this? We basically take a few shots, just changing the focusing point to further down into the object. So I'll always restart the first image. When I step away, you never know if the table moved, the tripod might have moved. It's always safe to start. I focus by hand. I'm going to talk about it in the second part a little bit more, how I tend to do it. Some people like using focusing rails. Some like using computerized rails. I'm very old school and very traditional. I just use my left hand to focus. So does my staff. So image one, two, three, four, and that's enough. I took four images. So we'll look in capture one right now. The last four images. All right, so four, one, two, three, four. Now here it looks like the Camera might have been shooting at a different frame rate. Let me just take a quick look. Right here you can see actually the curtain. So I'm just going to crop the photo just so it matches everything properly. All right, just going to bring up the cropping 
little bit up and apply it across the board. All right, so if I go to the first image here, that's number one, number two, number three, and number four. Look how the focusing points change throughout everything. So first point, if I zoom in 100%, the focus is in the front of the barrel. Focusing point number two is around the focusing ring, I mean the aperture ring. Shot number three is further down. It's a bit further down here. And the last one is, I think, getting the actual, oops, the actual dial in focus on the rear. So I'm going to export these four items. I'm calling it focus stacking, simple. And I select process. And once it's done, I'll rejoin you in a second. Now that the four images have been exported, we're going to jump into Photoshop and I'll show you how it's done in here. So we're going to go File, Automate, Photo Merge. We're going to uncheck Blend Images Together and then we'll browse to the file. So we'll take the four simple focus stacking examples, click OK. And it's basically going to take the images and combine them together. Um, it's going to make a file with four different layers. And unfortunately, Photoshop is not the fastest program out there, I find, when it comes to focus stacking. This is the latest iMac. I believe probably it's, it's an i7. It's got 8 or 16 gigs of, gigs of RAM. It's not a bad computer, and it's slow. So as I'm watching this, I might just cut and come back to it once it's done. OK, Photoshop has loaded all the images together. We're going to select them, pressing Shift and click All. So we're going to go to Edit, Auto Align Layers. So we're going to leave it on Auto and click OK. So it's just going to align everything so it matches from layer to layer which I have a feeling it might have actually done that. I'm looking at the corners here in the image, and I see that I think it did. So anyways, maybe it did. Maybe I just did a step by extra uselessness. Anyways, and then we do auto blend. So edit, auto blend layers, and we're going to say stack images and a checkbox on seamless tones and color. So we click OK. And now it's going to compute the image and stack everything together so you have one nice piece of pa. Again, notice the time this is taking for a simple four, stacked, four image stack. Four images. Yes, I understand the images are 160 megs each, TIFF file from a 60 megapixel digital back, but still, this is crazy slow. All right, so I'm back. Photoshop has finally decided after a record-breaking minute and 30 seconds of processing to spit out my beautifully stacked image. So let's look in Photoshop. And I'd say it's quite nice. Look at this. It's pretty much in focus everywhere. Look at the end. It's not bad. Is it perfect? Probably not. I'm looking. I might have gone a bit fast in my little tutorial and taken one image not enough. Um, you know, five images might have been the perfect amount. But also, let's see what the other software does, which is my software of choice, which is Helicon Focus. Now, Helicon is a standalone software. You can download it off the internet. It's pretty easy. Google it. And what that gives you is speed. <laughs> and it gives you more visibility, more functions, more, more of everything. So let's do the same thing now and open up Helicon Focus. OK, and we'll load the images. And we'll leave it to, I guess, method B is what I prefer. I'll get into that in the second part of the tutorial. Uh, just take my 
mojo on it or whatever you want to call it. Method B, I'll press render at the default settings and let's take a look. So already loading the images took, I think, a matter of two seconds. And now calculating the image is going to be a matter of another couple of seconds. All right, now it's starting. It's on image two. And it's almost done. One more image to go. All right, done. And it probably took a whole, what, 20 seconds? Not very long. OK, so now let's take a look. If I click anywhere on the image, I get the little zoom tool. And I can take a look at the image, how it did. Now, over here is where I believe I was, I should have taken maybe one more frame. You know, see right here, it's a little bit blurry, and I believe over here. Um, so it gave me similar results to Photoshop, but in a heck of a lot less time. And that's why I love Helicon Focus. Speed, speed, speed. It's great. And uh, I'm going to go over in the next part the actual functions that you have, or the methods A, B, and C, as well as the two uh, parameters, radius and smoothing, in part two.